Mayor. Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. So Gary, what film are we going to be talking about today? Raw is a 2016 film directed by Julia de Cournau. It follows vegetarian Justine as she uh, starts veterinary school and is subject to extreme hazing rituals by older students, including eating raw meat. Uh, The film uses a coming-of-age narrative arc to weave themes of cannibalism, sisterhood and the animalistic nature of human beings. Yeah, definitely does. Okay, um... This is a film that I had I've heard about for a while now, um, and it always kind of intrigued me because I wasn't really quite sure of the premise. I guess I, I thought it was maybe like, you know, kind of zombie type thing. I thought that was where we were going with it. Um, yeah, I thought this was really good. I was I was really into this. Um, there was something about the the atmosphere that I had right at the beginning. This kind of um, like almost. Well, it was like isolation from the start, right? It was almost like, like you know, the, the, you get the parents taking the daughter to this veterinary school, um, and it felt so isolated in the kind of you know this little group of people. And then even when they drop her off, and the, the older sister isn't there to pick her up, and they just leave her, like they just the, the dad just like Let, let's go kind of thing. Um, and then the way they managed to portray the school um, being so isolated. If that makes sense. That it felt like there was no authority. Mm. Um, was it a really interesting take on it? Right, I wasn't really sure, what, you know, what what the premise was. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like I get it's like darkly comedic. Um, really, kind of um, ramps up the tension at times as well. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with this. I thought this was this was a, a quite a fun film, and it really held my attention for the whole for the whole runtime. I was I was really enjoyed this one. Cool. Yeah, I think this is a quite a fascinating piece of work. Um I think De now is quite a really impressive, kind of thoughtful director. Um it's funny thinking back to the Cannibal Ferox episode where we were talking about how you can't really do cannibal films anymore. Um because of kind of yeah, racial quality. Uh-huh. I've totally forgot about this this movie. And that's, I think that's um true. uh De Kurnow's managed to use cannibalism in a really refreshing, uh, really fresh way. Um, yeah, it's a quite a powerful piece of work. It, it, it takes a lot to make me uh, uncomfortable or make me squirm mm. in my seat. <laughs> There's multiple <laughs> scenes in this movie uh, where I was like, wow, yeah, really shocking, surprising. Um, uh, it made me actually physically squirm a wee bit about in the seat. Um, but I really liked uh, De now's take on this. Um, I read a quote from her who said, like, cannibalism is part of humanity. Um, just a kind of real, making it a very kind of dry, matter-of-fact take on it. Because traditionally, when there's a lot of the cannibal films we've looked at, the Italian cannibal films, it's something to be, that's where the core of the horror is. It's something to be afraid of. Um it's something to fear in these kind of savage people uh, who are other uh, to us are something different uh, whereas this makes it totally kind of mundane and sort of out of control um, from a moral point of view which I kind of liked about it yeah so her take on it is it's, it's not a cannibal in this film cannibalism isn't a ritual or it isn't sort of punishment it's it's like it's more like a drug addiction um, once you've tasted uh, meet with these characters um, it's like you can't stop yeah it's, it's funny because sometimes I'll overlap with cannibalistic tropes in movies and zombie tropes whereas mm. this one was interesting because the cannibalism was also almost more like uh, zombie like because um, once Justine had a first taste of meat it was like, uncontrollable uh, yeah. and more like it's sort of the kind of traditional zombie chasing human flesh uh, with no agency of their own um, so that was quite interesting um, another thing I liked about it was this sort of thematic thread about 
um, there was lots of conversations about animals, animal rights, and you had this kind of conflation of animal rights with human rights. There's a conversation in the sort of cafeteria uh, where one of the, the student characters is talking about um, having sex with a monkey and the sort of <laughs> ethics of that. And then Justine makes the point that she says, I can't remember exactly, but she's saying that it would not be like so, ha- raping a monkey is the same as raping a woman, and then another character mm, takes yeah. exception to that. So you have this kind of conflation of animals being equated with humans in a moral sense. But I also liked how De Cournau sort of twisted that logic to say that, well, if it's okay to eat animals, it must be okay to eat humans. And I feel like you've got this, the characters of Justine, I think, and Alexa, Alexia, I think is the older mm-hmm. sister, sort Alexa. of dealing with the kind of morality of their own cannibalism, um, which I found really fascinating. It was a fresh take on it. So yeah, I had a couple of wee uh, things that I didn't think worked, but I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Uh, for now. Come on, yeah. Um, I think you're right. Like, um, so to, to come back to what you said about like squirming your seat, I mean, the the bit that really like I, I couldn't quite believe it was getting to me quite as much um was but you know it's like so she was gonna eat her sister's finger mm. right um and she she grabbed it and you knew you knew it was coming right you knew what we were going with. although that whole bit when when she's going to, you know her sister brings the scissors over and then she kind of kicks her clear um and when she comes up with the finger, I was like, holy shit. And it was awkward. That was, yeah, that was a pretty big fucking pair of scissors, wasn't it? <laughs> right? Um, then <laughs> she's sitting there looking at the finger, like, and kind of, like, dripping blood in her hand. And I really I had a I had a, <laughs> I had a cushion in my lap. And I, I started, like, kind of uncontrollably waving it about, kind of like, no, <laughs> kind of like, like I, 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 and then after it was like, what was that? Where did that come from? But there was something just about the way that it was all building mm. to that moment. Um, you know, like the dripping of the blood, then the little nibble of the finger, and then, uh, I mean, full on munching it like a, a chicken wing. <laughs> it was, and and I think it was like, see, um, if, her, if it had, A, maybe hadn't been her sister, and B, if the person whose finger she was eating was dead, I think it might not have got in my brain as deep. Mm. But because like, I'm like, so one, her sister's bleeding out, as far as we know, like she's kind of phoned the the, the, the ambulance or the, the the doctors and not really doing very much about it. It seems like, um, and to him, like she's gonna she's gonna wake up and see you munching on her finger. <laughs> um, so all of that was just kind of like drilling into my brain, and it was so well done. Like it was it was just um, yeah, it really got to me. <laughs> yeah, that scene, it, it sort of really built the tension. That it sort of drew drew it out. You're sort of thinking. I know, I know, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but she's gonna exactly. wake up. Like her sister's gonna wake, obviously wake up and go, yeah. "What are you doing?" And she's gonna go yeah. nothing. And then the, you know the story goes on the same from there. But yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it was pretty dire. Like, I was like holy shit. But um, but it was awesome. Like it was like so. Um, like I loved the, I loved that kind of. It was like the roller coaster thing that you talk about sometimes of where you don't really know where we're going. Some you know, and you get that kind of, um, mm. you know, up up a. Going over a, like a steep, no, a tall hill, you know, and, and, and diving down the way you get in the bump in the roads and like your stomach goes. Um, mm-hmm. It really did affect me. <laughs> um, but there's a few scenes, there's a few scenes like that in, in the film that, that that really kind of you're not expecting, like um, you know, like even just the first part was just eating the raw chicken, you know. And I was gonna say that when you're talking about the can- cannibalism, I guess I almost didn't mm. even, that didn't even occur to me 100 percent for the cannibalism thing right the kind of modern cannibalism because i guess in my head she was eating kind of any raw flesh almost it seemed like initially at least mm. um and then you've got obviously i mean but it's, it's clear as day that like when you see the you know they're talking about the it's, it's okay to eat animals it's okay to, to eat humans and they're talking about the the dog that gets put down because once they've ta- once it's tasted human flesh you're never you're never safe around it yeah um and that kind of echoes into the kind of finale of about well, the kind of almost finale of, of the film where she contemplates locking her sister in the room and and that feels very like locking an animal away you know what i mean it really did that that, that jumped out at you there um mm. but yeah there was it was it was really well done um and i've got to say that i really 
the two sisters are really liked, and even the the, the roommate, um, what was his name, Adrian. Um, I really liked all the characters as well. I thought they were all really. I didn't want anyone to kind of like get it or or whatever, you know. Um, but I, I liked the kind mm-hmm. of relationships with the three of them. You know, even with, with the, the brother and sorry, the sister and 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 Adrian as well, who seemed to not like each other at first. But um, no, it was it was really well done. I thought the performances were brilliant. One thing that sort of and maybe a a negative thing about it that I I'm sort of thinking through. Um, I did potentially feel that they have sort of the two threads of dramatic conflict that I can see in the movie as the sort of relationship between the two sisters Mm. and the betrayal narrative. Uh, One source of dramatic conflict and then you have um, Justine's discovery of her own cannibalism and her sort of moral dilemma dilemma about that. Um, I, I, I was wondering maybe did those two the con they two kind of got in the way of each other that we couldn't explore potentially one to its full kind of uh, development because I did feel feel like that those two were kind mm. of battling for space in the film, but at the same time that they're, they're, they're kind of narratively both important to each other, um, especially in the scene that you point out with uh, where she. Con- considers locking uh, her sister in the room um, she doesn't out of a sisterly affection but that leads to the our sister's um, sort of un- inability to control herself and uh, kills yeah. the Adrian character uh, by, by eating his leg um, um, yeah I don't know did you feel that, that, that there was we weren't quite getting the space to there was a lot of ideas, maybe. Yeah, sort of you know, it's interesting. It's like um, I think I was just kind of caught up in the film, and that that one was kind of feeding the other. Um, but yeah, like thinking about what you're you're pointing out, there 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 is maybe a want there to have a further expo- you know exploration of that um, that we don't get. But I think because of because of the roller coaster that is the film, that you kind of get carried away suddenly of everything that's happening, and then, you know, oh, oh she's gonna eat meat slash people, um, and oh, her sister does now as well. You know, and you kind of by the time you get there, you've kind of you've kind of moved away, and you're kind of already down the path so far that it's kind of you can't really turn back and necessarily explore much else, um, because of that premise. But yeah, I know what you mean. There, there's maybe something. I mean, I haven't seen any any of her other films, but there's maybe something to be explored there elsewhere. You know. Um, mm. mm-hmm. So the, the sister, like, what, let's let's get to the story a little bit, if you don't mind, just to just to quick to uh, go through a few points mm-hmm. that um, stick out to me that you know I'm not quite clear on, and maybe I don't know if you'll have any uh, ideas on this, but um, so the the instigator of uh, Justine's cannibalism um, appears to be her eating meat for the first time, right? This this rabbit's kidney or whatever it is that they, they've kind of they're eating as a kind of um, initiation um, thing, and then so she then breaks out in this rash, um, and then then starts to you know have a craving for meat. We then see later that Justine finds the same the same cream that she's given by the doctor for the rash. And her sister's covered. Um, mm. So, and then obviously it's revealed that her sister has the same kind of craving for meat, and where it's assumed that that's who was diving in the road at the beginning in the very first scene, because um, we see her doing that same thing later. So, do you take it to mean that her sister started having this craving from the year before when she was going through initiation? And she's been dealing because it appears like it's, there's like a year at least gap between when her sister went to veterinary school and when uh, Justine goes. Um, I guess I'm just wondering, you know, like she seemed to be quite normal when we meet Alexia, even though like, well, normal kind of, you know, uni college student, student but um, you know, she seems to be in control at least. I'm just wondering what your thoughts there are, or, or, or do we? Th- uh, Justine or, does uh, Alexia. Or, 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 um, right. Or do you think 
that she didn't maybe eat the, the rabbit kidney the previous year like she said she did and it's her eating it there at the same time as Justine did that um triggers um, it all. Right. It can't be the mm. bad it can't be because we've seen we see the, the opening scene, but then that could have happened, I guess. We because we don't see the, the aftermath of that, potentially the aftermath of that, until Justine and, and Adrian are going into town. So that could have happened like right. not at the beginning of the you know, time wise at the beginning of the film chronologically, it could have happened somewhere in the middle. Yeah, well this is a bit of um potential and messy kind of logic right. of the film, especially with the re- reveal mm-hmm. we get at the yeah. end. Um, not to be too pedantic, but it, it did occur to me. One of the things I was thinking with the reveal at the end is that, okay, the mm. parents knew that Justine was going to become a cannibal and they kind of let it go anyway. Well, I think they... they well, they tried to protect... Sorry, I think uh, it feels like that's mm. why they were trying to stop, you know, not have her eat meat. But then if they know... Mm. But they already knew that the same thing had happened to Alexia, surely. Maybe like, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe it had. Maybe it mm. hadn't because I don't know. It. It. I think the way it's presented, looking at it now, is that perhaps Alexia didn't start having this until that point. It's possible. We don't exactly know the mm. how that character developed it. Well, one thing that occurred to me was so Alexia's been on that that a uh, journey, and she willfully gave um, Justine the rabbit liver or rabbit kidney knowing that that would spark the same journey in Justine which is quite a cruel thing um, and, and, and and I I kind of agree with you that could certainly be be a, you know the reason in there but I feel I just feel that with how quickly Justine and Alexia deteriorate from the point we can we can as the audience find out about it that it feels mm. like I don't know if she could have hidden that for as long for a year potentially or I mean this is a matter of weeks right. this happens and so I just I don't know I just maybe I'm thinking too deeply about it right but like that I, for, I was just there was just something about like that kind of scene where she eats it I'm like and she says she ate it last year I'm like I wonder like feels like it, it, the deterioration mm. was really quick and I guess when 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 I saw the cream at first I thought it was going to be Maybe this is a temporary thing that our sister's been through already, and you know they're not going to have that conversation, and it's going to be too late or that type of thing. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't know if there's a, a concrete answer in the film. I, I feel like it could go either way, um, but mm. but one thing, but uh-huh. I, I don't know. Um, it, it's interesting. I heard the colonel now say that in the first couple of drafts of the script, they weren't sisters. Right, right. Um, they were just sort of. Uh, Alexia was an older student that Justine befriended but she said she wasn't really satisfied with that mm. dramatically until she came up with the idea of making them sisters which is maybe the key because maybe that um, kind of contradictory aspect is like being brothers or sisters that mm. it's a love-hate thing because she is quite cruel to Justine but there's this, this, this conflict where uh, she kind of takes a bit of joy in sort of being cruel but also has this this uh, sort of bond that they can't shake because when the scene where uh, Justine eats a finger and then uh, Alexia uh, wakes up and then you see Alexia shed a tear see sort of considering the finger eating as sort of a betrayal In a sense, but that kind of contradicts the fact that it was Alexia that started this whole journey. Yeah. Um, but maybe that that's not a contradiction. Maybe that's like a good contradiction because that's sort of real and sort of the conflicts that people have, like of logic people have yeah. in their own head. I guess maybe maybe that contradiction that you're mentioning with the tear, maybe that does reinforce the fact that maybe or support the theory that they both started this from that point, that inception point that we see in the film. That, that Alexia wasn't previously mm. um, cannibalistic, or like hadn't had had managed to go somehow the whole year without eating meat, right? Um, maybe, mm. maybe. Um, yeah, maybe it's her dealing with it as well, like her rage at mm-hmm. her parents, because it's the, the film seems to imply that 
it's a mm-hmm. genetic yeah. thing that sort of um, it brought down generation to generation. Oh. Um, yeah, I mean that, that. This all kind of brings me to, I suppose, uh, uh, one thing that I did feel was a little bit weak of the film. In the film was, I think maybe you agree a little bit, was the the ending, the actual literal ending. Um, uh, I kind of sense something was happening with the dad because of the way that um, how aloof he had been the whole film. Right, I was kind of it was kind of bugging me a little right. bit. I was like, um, I I didn't find it very. I, I just thought it was that great. I thought I thought like the, the, you know. Like, everything from like let's leave her here kind of thing i'm like okay he seems to like her like he seems to like love his daughter but like mm. he's just like let's just leave her here um and then at the hospital and stuff like that but then when we get you know the revelation about the fact that he's kind of that their mother has this same craving um and she's been <laughs> slowly nibbling at him <laughs> all these years <laughs> um i don't know something about that felt a bit like um a bit like the, the, the punchline to a short film or something, you know what I mean? It felt Maybe. a little bit... Uh, it's a wee bit like a kind of usual suspects type ending where it sort of makes you reconsider oh, the whole yeah, film. Yeah, a, a, a bit, <laughs> a a bit but I guess that like uh, you're saying that they, in the first couple of drafts that they weren't sisters, I guess then she wouldn't have necessarily had that ending you know, mm, for the, for the film. Knows, yeah. um, so, so I guess that kind of reinforces to me that I feel that's a bit of a weak point of the film. I wasn't that into that. I liked even the, you know, the kind of the sisters in, in jail, I guess, or some sort of asylum. I'm not really sure where, she, where she, as it, as there is. Mm. Um, I kind of like their last ex- exchange. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but then after that, I was, you know, you sensed, like for, for me, I, at least I, I sensed like from a mile away, something was coming here, like there was some real revelation. Um, and I kind of, you know, I kind of knew what it was, but at that point, by the time we got to the table at the end, um, uh, and I just felt it was a little bit cheap. I don't know. Arguably, I, I, I wouldn't completely disagree with you. Yeah, the first time I watched the film, it was like a shock, and I was like, "Oh mm-hmm. wow, I didn't see that coming." And it was a uh, sort of um, as yeah. an image. Yeah. It's like quite a, another really shocking image. I was like, "Oh." And it makes you reconsider the whole film. Um, is it maybe a wee bit cheap, uh, cheap storytelling? Uh, mm. Maybe, um, but I think it's maybe it works in the kind of thematic ideas that the kind is trying to uh, tell the sort of this kind of the the mundaneness of of cannibalism. Maybe that the, the sort of and how human beings are just animals who have urges that. I have nothing to do with morality. Um, sometimes I think that's one of the things she's tried to push. So it, it works in that um, as a kind of as a downer of an ending. It, it's quite sad, but I guess it's sort of saying that you know we have kind of base primal urges, and maybe that we we try to to keep a cap on those best best we can. But sometimes mm-hmm. you can't kind of stop them coming out. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. Um, I think I'm just thinking back to the scene itself, and you're talking about the, the shockingness of it. Um, I think I don't know if um, maybe because I was already predisposed to not particularly like the the dad um, that mm. I felt um, that like his the performance maybe, maybe the character was was um, not very sincere. Um, and when he, you know, he gives the line, about, I think it's basically maybe you'll find a solution, kind of thing. You know, try to give her some hope. Mm. And I, I guess that line didn't hit very hard because it felt it felt like either I'm not I'm not really commenting the guy's acting right, but it felt either like a bad delivery of a line or it just didn't have any emotional mm. for me impact. Um, and it felt almost it felt very insincere, even like from the character's point of view. But maybe that's the point. Maybe he's he's so kind of defeated by it all. I don't know, but you know, I mean, that I, I didn't really give yeah. me anything to. I didn't feel it was a down ending. It was just kind of like, it, for me, it fell a little bit flat on that line. But you know, what I mean, I, I didn't quite get that. I think it that, that once we know what we know at the end, it does raise the question of why didn't the parents do more to protect yeah. Justine? I think that's a question you can't really get away with in terms of just the pure nuts and bolts mm-hmm. logic of it. But, I mean, they, 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 they're they shown to have been through the same initiation stuff, at least in part, as, as the daughters go through. 
definitely yeah, the, that they've been to the same school, the blood, yeah. At least yeah. the the blood dropping on mm. them um, from above. Yeah. So it feels like it's really like bad parenting uh, or irresponsible humaning <laughs> um, to let yeah. any of their daughters go, I guess, to this veterinary school. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. But it's interesting you're saying about the isolation. It's almost like the wet and just Yeah, that uh, that really wind. that really did yeah, impress me. Sorry, like yeah. the, the, that feeling of like um, it just felt like they were out in the middle of nowhere all the time, even though they had like an urban kind of you know the the, the dorm rooms and and the kind of concreteness of the of the the school area. It just felt like there was no. I'm going to say no adults, right? But I know it was like you know veterinary school, right? But like, it just felt like there was no authority. Like right from the beginning, when when the all the the elder classmen are like you know hazing them and stuff like that, um, that was uh, mm-hmm. you know you're like okay this can happen right I guess like you know that that you can go with that but after that I just felt like just such a lawless wild you know very kind of naturalistic kind of um, yeah. display that really I kept being so blown away with that like the fact that I just felt I felt so exposed with all the characters. Never felt like they were in any yeah. kind of safe place, or um, that again they had any kind of older people that they could look up to. If that makes sense for for safety, even the teachers mm-hmm. were being <laughs> a bit dickish to to Justine. But the one teacher we see, um, I think it's just one, so it's one or two, right? But like the one that has a conversation with her about cheating. Um, so that was really that was really cool, and like you know, I liked the way that felt. Um, and then you, but you kind of juxtapose that a little bit with the kind of the so the classes that they do have. Like, I'm thinking specifically about the horse operation. Mm, right? Yeah, right. Seen, like, yeah. It, whereas that feels like that feels like a class, right? But that even still manages to feel like you know. I'm sitting there questioning to myself. I'm like, was that? You know, you start. You know, other things we talked about. You know, animal cruelty in the past, right? Where, you know, you're thinking. Was this just like a, a vet school that they happened to be filming at? That they managed to, you know, this horse was going to have this done anyway? Or like, is this something to do at vet schools, <laughs> you know? Um, right. Yeah, the the scene where they put the uh-huh. horse to sleep, that was, they just went into a vet right. school okay. and filmed it as they were doing it. And they just right. put the okay. I'm glad to hear that. But, but they managed to make it feel really, as I say, unregulated. And it's like, I'm like, are these students? Are these. Mm. Um, I don't think they're lecturers, you know, they don't feel that they're necessarily people that are showing them how to do this. It just felt like, I don't know, like Lord of the Flies or something, you know, it just felt like they were like, <laughs> kind of all a lot of them unto themselves. It was really, I really liked that though. It really did kind of mm. uh, give it an, a kind of other place kind of feel to it. Yeah, I think that's one of the successes of the film uh, that you sort of feel like you're in a traditional kind of coming of age drama mm-hmm. but then you have these kind of sh- right turns into re- re- really shocking uh, quite disturbing scenes um, kind of speckled throughout it which I really liked Yeah, I, I, and I was talking about the hazing at the beginning and, and again that feels like quite the normal you're saying like feels like a very teen kind of coming of age film right mm-hmm. um, and then and it, it, it turns out to not really be that <laughs> weird a thing but they, they have all the kind of um, the rookies like crawling in their hands and knees and the way that, that something about the way that's filmed really is kind of unsettling and you're like and there's like not much music and stuff you know it's it's kind of creepy it felt, felt almost reminding me a little bit of under the skin a little bit you know that way you're just kind of like right. what's going on here why is this happening and it turns out to be quite a innocent kind of you know like hazing kind of thing right because they're going to this party but it just was like this kind of weird visual that you're like and again we're talking about being at a vet school and stuff like that and um yeah, that was really cool and, and kind of like surprising as well. So yeah, that I mean that that's that's my thoughts on Raw. Um, I was always really keen to see this film. Um, I said I didn't fully know the premise, but uh, it really really blew me away, and it's something that I definitely revisit just because it's such a um, you know it's, it's such an engaging film. I, I thought, and, and it, it really does kind of. Um, like just grip, grip your attention with every scene. Every scene, you just don't know where we're going to go. Almost, even though like, many of them are quite conventional scenes, it's just with that kind of the premise. And you're, and you're not sure um, initially what the is it cannibalism? Is it you know you you just don't know really where we're going with it, right? Um, mm. 
Uh, but you know, I love the characters. I thought it was a uh, stunningly shot, and the score was really cool. Really, some of the, really some of this, the, the 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 needle drops and stuff like that yeah. were really effective. Like the scene where we go into the party with Justine at the back of the party, and we kind of went slowly zoom in and we find her mm. uh, it was really cool um so yeah i'm really um, impressed with this director I, I can't quite say her name julia de i DeCourna? think that's the right pronunciation cool that's yeah I but saying, I, yeah. um i definitely recommend this film and I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing um some of our other films uh, is it titan 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 i think sure but, uh, i think that's our most recent film right, so mm. uh yeah i'm really looking forward to checking out some some other films so i'd definitely give this a recommendation yeah i agree with uh, everything you said there Uh, it's a really impressive piece of work really fresh um really interesting take on the cannibal genre um uh, using cannibalism as sort of in a metaphorical way uh, to uh, you know say something about human condition animals uh human desires and so becoming an adult yeah fascinating stuff um a lot of really surprising shocking scenes if you're into that kind of thing so yeah i'd highly recommend raw well simon i think that'll do it for another episode a small end note Mm -hmm. uh we also now have instagram if md wants to follow us on there I'm not sure how, how you sell on Instagram. Is it um, at Cinema Subculture? That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Check us on on the on the gram. On the yeah. gram. <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> at Cinema Subculture. All one word, Gary. Yes. Nice. No one Some exclusive here. content behind the scenes. Oof. Potentially. Whoa. Oh. That's how you tease. Right. <laughs> So you've been listening to Cinema Subculture. If you'd like more of this content, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, like the video, and hit the notification bell. Thanks for listening. I've been Simon. I've been Gary. Keep it extreme.